And welcome back, guys, to part two of Let's Play Katawa Shoujo. In the last part, unfortunately, our main character, Hisao, suffered a terrible heart attack, and he is now going to be joining Yomaku, uh, I guess, high school for uh, disability students. And I don't think he's really all that thrilled. The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in, the gen in general seem to do that. But this is one. This one's especially so. <clears throat> Sorry. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcome at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably not. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. So I walk towards the main building of Yumaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone, as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have, more like a park, with a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into mind. It makes me shudder. I shake them off. I stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies, too big, too, and too many, for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought of. I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley, even though I was told this is my new school. In the back of my head, it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again, how they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a calming color. So why am I feeling so anxious, despite all this greenery? Hmm. Only after I stand in front of the haunty, haunty sorry, main building, I surprised myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back. Even if I had no life, I could return to. Sorry. So there was no pause that was necessary there. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture noticed me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. Tall man. You must be uh, uh, Nina... Nikki? Nakai. So... Oh, so you are. Excellent. I'm your homeroom teacher and science and science teacher. My name's Muto. Well, welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and lo looks at his watch. The herd nurse asks you for a brief check-in list, or check-in visit, sorry. <laughs> but there's no time for that now. Oh? Should I go later? Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. I mean, isn't that normal? Of course. But not everyone likes to be the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, uh, but it's no problem. Let's go, then. My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. 
The third door down the third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for class 3-3. Muto open the door and enter. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get a grip. This is, uh, this is a big step, I know that. But there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. <laughs> All right, so I guess these are my classmates. Oh, uh, let's see. This looks like Ritsu. Does anybody else think that looks like Ritsu? <laughs> Actually, it's like a male version, because I think that's the male uniform, right? All right. This guy's got a cane, so I'm guessing he may be blind, or maybe uh, has a prosthetic leg. Hmm. Interesting. It's pretty spacious. The ceiling is usually high, and there's a lot of space left over around and in between the desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high, old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks and a shelf underneath for the books and wooden chairs with metal frames, simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal, like students in any other school, but then why would, <laughs> why would they be here? They're probably like me. And I have something wrong with them. And I and bleh, me and I have something wrong with them. Only it's just not immediately obvious. Then I notice that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb on her right hand. It's a little jarring. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair. And it's pretty eye-catching. As she sees me look back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if to make herself invisible. There's one boy with a cane leaning against the locker at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motion. Sign language? She peers at me over the rim of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands, and so does everyone else, except one girl in the front, in the first row, who has only one hand. I cringe a little, but hide it by bowing in thanks for this applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm Hisao Nakai. And after that. My hobbies are reading and soccer. I hope to get along with everyone, even though I'm a new student. And after that, I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more, something more exciting. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks, from he picks me up from here. Everyone seems to be satisfied, even with what little I said, though. A few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. It could have gone worse. <laughs> hmm. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. The first row girl claps on this round, with her one hand against her own wrist, and ends with a bandaged stump. It makes me feel a little bad. We're going to be doing some group work today, so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, uh, it's fine with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamichi. She is the class representative. She can explain anything you might want to know, and who else? Uh, and who else would be will be better than that, right? Okay. How could I know? The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we will be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamishi is. Slow. The teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. All right, Hakamichi is right there. Shizune Hakamichi. 
As he calls out her name, the cute, bubbly-looking girl with the bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her by the window. Hey, I guess you're Hakamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, she's one of those girls, right? She's the spunky type. Oh, here we go. And so it begins, everyone. And so begins the visual novel. <laughs> what? What? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. It's nice to meet you, too, but... I'm not Hakamichi. I'm Misha. This is Hakamichi. She... She-chan. Oh, God. She's one of those, too. She gives nicknames to everyone. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her, the one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she has been staring at me this whole time. She nods once nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence, but only barely. She has short yet carefully, neatly brushed hair, a pair of oval-shaped glasses balanced on the tip of her dainty nose, and the dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. It's nice to meet you. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. After she nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying things like, you'll be able to talk to people, and who's better to explain things to you? I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? But I understand why you, you would think that I was Sichan. Sichan is death, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She says, it's nice to meet you too. You could totally misconstrue half of this stuff. Like, <laughs> what's her name? Mashi? Or Mishi? Oh god, I've forgotten her name already. She's really that impressionable, guys. <laughs> yeah, Misha. All right, Misha, gotta gotta let that click in there. I I have a bad feeling that it's gonna take a while. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Sichan, of course he is. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right? Seems like a little uh, like a very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was uh, going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today so soon, Hitchan, right? Hitchan? Yep, it fits, doesn't it? No, no it doesn't. Did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise, I never liked that nickname. I don't really see how, I don't really see how. It fits! You look just like I imagined. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, you look just like a Hitchan. Or a Hickchan. <laughs> it could be Hickchan. Some like really stupid drum. And I say you. <laughs> Chan. <laughs> I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Hikamichi taps her fingers on the desk to get Mishan's attention or Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly, their hands a blur. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Sikchan. Yeah, I, I don't know, is it Shichan? Or should I say the the C, like Shik, Shikchan? Is he Hikchan? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. Wants to know that she's the class rep, so if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Hmm. Do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the hard words a bit, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Oh, I have a feeling that, um, I guess, technically, if we were to put it lightly, um, she's the retard? <laughs> That's not really putting it lightly. It's just like, remember, disability doesn't have to be just physical. Um, it can also be mentally as well. I don't know how the school works with uh, mental cases, so she could be a little slow. And she was put in this class not only for the fact that she can translate for Shizune, um, but also, well, 
she's a little derp. And I can see the derp! I don't know if you guys see the derp, but I already see the derp. Misha stumbles with the hard words a bit. Yeah, I already read that. Thanks, that would be pretty helpful. Yeah, I just kind of came straight to class today. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I gave her, I'm giving her that stupid laugh. That's no good. You should always try to learn as much about uh, as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not just with school, either. Always. Even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Sitchin? Ha <laughs> ha Learning about where you're going? I guess I didn't bother to do that, or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it half-acidly, but anyway. I don't say anything, and Misha signs something that ends in a shrug. What was that? It seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over my seat. Both of them are smiling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. You look down. Are you okay? Hmm. Don't take it the wrong way, please. I, I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things about uh, by asking. Oh my goodness. Blech. I'm tongue-tied again. Asking for help is perfectly normal, as much as needing as needing help. Stop looking like you're just a fail. Uh, you just failed the test. <laughs> All right. Ah, and another thing, you don't have to call Sitchan something so formal like Hakamichi or class rep all the time. You can just call her Shitchan. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think she wants that. <laughs> the music stops, so I don't think she wants that. <laughs> okay, maybe that's too casual. Maybe Shizune would be more appropriate. Yep, yep, Shizune it is. <laughs> okay, that'd be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly, so I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier, especially about Shizune, who is, I assume would be all business. Well, she still seems like that, just less so, I guess. Hmm? Uh oh. <laughs> I think she figured out what I'm thinking. That That's gonna be creepy. <laughs> oh, alright, we haven't even touched the assignment. We should start work now, or Sachan will get mad. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. Now things are gonna get weird. The assignment is also kind of long, so we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. Ah, that too! She only really glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Okay, okay, I'll get the message. After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? The assignment is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of being both difficult and unnecessarily long. Alright, at least we know what they were doing. <laughs> Something complicated. Alright. Still, we finished in a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. I have a feeling Shizune is really capable. I, I, I don't really see Misha, actually. Uh, yeah. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish, not to mention a little more easily distracted. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about it. The clock tower bell rings, signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch! Oh, what the hell is that? Okay, I, I need to take a minute here, and I need to point out that terribly disgusting photo in the background. <laughs> I mean, I know it's not supposed to be the center of attention, but don't put it in the end. Like, and watch, both of the characters, after I pass this text log, are going to appear on the screen, and that portrait's still going to be there. Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha, who is beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. Oh, wait, nope, didn't have to, didn't have to put them there. We descended even below, even below the lobby where I met Muto, down to the bottom floor. Just like everything in this school, the cafeteria seems too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the classic exterior. Its big windows open to the courtyard towards the main gate. It's the cafeteria! Her enthusiastic statement of, this <laughs> of the obvious makes people around us stare, but Misha doesn't seem to care, so we proceed to the line. 
There's a rather long list of menu options, which seems great until I realize that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice. It almost feels like I'm back at the hospital, eating portions measured with scientific precision to meet the needs of the patients. I pick something at random and follow Shizune to a table, sitting opposite to her. As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. Hmm? Is it Shizune or is it Shizune? Maybe you can tell me. I don't understand signs, so the point escapes me. Maybe looking at the person who talks to you is proper and polite. Do you want to know something? What? About anything. We're, uh, we're your guide, so you should ask us if there's something. Hmm, I wonder. I think I got everything. Huh? Ask about the library. Ah, uh, jeez. That seems like that could backfire. Uh, I like books, so I could ask about the library. Uh, I think I got everything. That's just being a dick. Uh, I, I really don't want to be a dick to these two. They're, they're being nice to me. I mean, what can you say? There's those people that, you know, are forced into doing it. It looks like these two actually really want to, you know, have a conversation. So, I don't know. I think I'll, I'll ask about... Hmm. I'm actually interested in Shizuna. Let's ask about... Hey, she really intrigues me, and I kind of want to ask her, ask something about her. But I can't really ask about something that personal, can I? Hmm. I can't come up with anything else to ask, so I just uh, focus on my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Suzume sign back and forth very animatedly. So, he made me choose. He made me choose, and... Uh, he's not going to follow through with it? Well, what was the point of the choice, then? <laughs> Did I choose wrong? I don't know if it made me feel like I choose wrong. I don't know. Misha and Suzume sign back and forth very adamantly, throwing sideways glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they're talking about secret girl stuff or something. I quickly notice a conversation and sign is not enough to fill a silence. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. The dark hair girl I noticed before is slumped over her desk at the last row. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the desk with the elegance of a rhino. <laughs> she shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if we were slowly turning into stone just from our presence. Misha and Suzune either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange, as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that made me like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Besides me, Misha, and Suzune, I'm having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today, Hitchan. We've got to hurry already, since there's a lot of work for us to do. You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Ah, uh, wait, the teacher said I have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on, the, nur the nurses have their own building, so we have to go outside. We join the floor of students making their way down the stairwell and outside, with the girls pointing out the other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. All right. You know what? We are hitting in on uh, 24 minutes here, so I think we'll cut it here. We're heading our way to the nurse's office now. Hopefully I'm making right decisions. I don't know. <laughs> it seems weird. I I'm really interested in Suzune. She seems like a very interesting character. Someone that can't speak for themselves always feels like they're being they're hiding behind other people. So it could be interesting. Um... That girl with uh, for what looks like burn scars may be interesting as well, but she looks a little too shy. I've never been really interested in that type of person, but you never know. 
So, in the next part, we're going to head to the nurse's office and uh, probably talk more with uh, Misha and Shizune. So take care, guys. Stay frosty. Keep on being healthy.